Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Stephanie Niles. I'm the Vice President for Enrollment and Communications at Ohio Wesleyan and thrilled to welcome you to our Bishop Plus session this evening. This one is entitled, Let's Get Down to Business. We wanna tell you everything we can about the business program at Ohio Wesleyan. I know we've got students on the line, maybe parents as well, who are seniors and trying to make a final decision, juniors who are exploring our business program and, and all of their college options. We are eager to share all the information we can, answer your questions. We've had a number of questions submitted in advance from students, but we welcome your questions during the presentation. There is a Q&A function that we encourage you to use. Uh, if we don't get to your question, we will um, hopefully answer your question individually as well. I'm going to ask my two faculty panelists to introduce themselves in a moment, but you should see their names and their pictures here on the screen. I want to point that out to you because at the bottom, you'll also see their email addresses. You might want to jot those down. If there are particular questions you have about something they've said, a class they've discussed, or another piece of information they've shared that you'd like to hear more about. I know both of them would be happy to answer further questions you may have individually after the fact. So don't hesitate to use them. And again, don't hesitate to chime in with a question that you have during the panel. Matt, why don't I start with you? Hi, thanks, Stephanie. Uh, and thanks to all of you for joining us. Thanks for being interested in Ohio Wesleyan. We're excited you're here. I'm uh, Dr. Matt Volrath. I've been at Ohio Wesleyan for three years. I teach uh, Exploring Business, which is the first class you'll take in the Business Administration major. I also teach Marketing Management, which is uh, the introduction to marketing. I teach Brand Strategy um, and Management, which is kind of the capstone course for people who are interested in marketing. And I'm involved with several seminar courses too. I'm also the advisor for a couple of clubs here on campus, uh, students who are interested in marketing, involved in, in some real world projects with businesses and organizations in and around Columbus, and uh, also an entrepreneurial club where students are actively coming up with ideas for new new businesses and, and pitching them to people on campus and in the community. So I'm uh, excited to, to talk with you guys about business and uh, happy to answer any questions that you have. Great, thanks Matt. Glenn? Well, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Glenn Bryant, and uh, welcome. Glad to have you on board with us tonight. Uh, hopefully, we can get your questions answered and uh, inspire you to attend Ohio Wesleyan uh, this fall. So, I've been at Ohio Wesleyan for 10 years. I've got uh, a longer history of teaching than that. I taught at uh, another university. I've been involved in business for uh, uh, half my life, and then half my life has been uh, in academics. Uh, I primarily teach the corporate strategy class, which is the capstone class for our uh, business administration major. I also teach uh, international business, and uh, I do have a marketing background, so I teach marketing as well. Um, I also, uh, part of what I also do is I direct the um, Latham Entrepreneurial Scholars Program, uh, something that you might be interested in as we go down this path. and. Uh, um, other than that, um, we're just heavily involved in connecting with our students and connecting them into the world of business, uh, particularly from a liberal arts perspective. So I'll turn it back to you, Stephanie. Thank you both very much. Well, let's jump into the first question that we've received. And this is about how do you get into the business program at Ohio Wesleyan? The question is, do you apply and get admitted directly into the undergraduate business school? Or do you first apply to Ohio Wesleyan and then apply later to the business school, like during sophomore year? Which one of you would like to take that? I'll jump in on that. That's a great question. And uh, there are a number of uh, schools that do that. Uh, we don't do that at Ohio Wesleyan. Ohio Wesleyan, you will seek to have admission to the university. <clears throat> After you're in the university, what we'd recommend is uh, we want you to start taking uh, two or three classes in your freshman year in the area of business. And uh, one would be most certainly the exploring business class that uh, Dr. Polrath mentioned. Uh, but we wanna get you acclimated. And quite honestly, we wanna make sure that you uh, enjoy the area of business. We think you will, uh, but, the, but the benefits of a, a liberal arts institution like ours is we want you to be broadly educated 
and we want you to experience uh, the educational experience from several different venues. And, uh, uh, and then what we'll do is uh, hopefully in that first year, you'll uh, um, make a decision for business. And then it's a matter of getting you an advisor and then making sure that you're on track to tailor the major the way that you'd like to tailor it to, uh, to your specific uh, focus. Great, thanks, Glenn. Next question, what are Ohio Wesleyan's business-related majors? Sure, so we, we have several. We have business administration, and within business administration, you can take a track for marketing or a track for management. We also have a finance economics major, which is, as the name implies, a, a mix of, of those two disciplines together. We have accounting. Uh, people in, in accounting are usually headed toward a, a career, uh, you know, maybe working as a CPA. And we have international business and also an economics major. And Matt, a question that came in actually while you were talking, please describe the differences between your business administration and finance economics majors. Yeah, so uh, first of all, the business administration major, as I mentioned, you've got the option to choose one of these two tracks, so marketing or management. So a uh, key, key distinction there between finance and economics and business administration is that you will, you'll be taking a, a collection of classes where, you, where you're developing some expertise in, in one of those two areas. Whereas uh, finance economics, yes, there is some overlap with the, the business courses that you'd be taking as a business administration major, but this, these classes in finance and economics, they're gonna be uh, a little bit more, uh, a little more technical, a little more uh, you know, statistically oriented and geared towards somebody who's, who's planning to, to work in, in the world of finance or uh, maybe some sort of government uh, type role. Glenn, do you, would you wanna clarify that any, any more? No, perfectly. If you're targeting, if you're targeting a business analyst, uh, financial analyst, uh, Wall Street type position, banking, uh, financial planning, even uh, if you're in that area, you want to look at the finance economics major. It's uh, you'll take courses like portfolio theory management uh, and uh, and more advanced courses in the area of, uh, of finance. Uh, in the business administration major. Uh, you will take finance. It is a core functional part of business. Uh, but again, you won't go as deep into that. We, we look at it in the business administration side more from a managerial perspective. What do you need to know? The finance economics part would go further. And it would be more of a, you're a finance expert giving those services to a corporation. And that's, I'd say too with business administration, a goal we have is that when you graduate with that degree, you're well prepared to pivot into most any area of business. You know, you, you might not, you're, you're not coming out with the, the, you know, the finance depth as a finance economics major or an economics depth, depth as an economics major, uh, but you have enough of everything that you're, you're well prepared to, to start somewhere and learn more as you, you know, get into your career and you have a better idea of what really is interesting to you. So it's designed to be a little bit more flexible and, give you a more holistic picture of what's happening in the world of business. Great, thank you both. Glenn, you talked a little bit about admission, the differences between being admitted um, to a place like Ohio, Ohio Wesleyan versus a specific business school. Can you talk though more generally about the difference between a business major at a liberal arts institution as compared to an undergraduate business school? Yeah, I'd be happy to, because that's a, that's a really important question. It's an area that uh, our students and parents would, uh, should consider. Uh, we believe uh, when you look at the future of business, when you look at the jobs of the future, and uh, particularly with, the, uh, um, uh, with artificial intelligence, machine learning coming in, uh, the jobs of the future are going to change. And when you look at most of the studies who, that talk about job skills, the job skills that they're looking at, there are there is technical skills in there, but a lot of the skills that they're looking at are more of uh, people skills, uh, processing of information skills, being able to sort through a lot of data. These are human skills, and these are skills that come from uh, a liberal arts uh, foundation, and so we build on that. So we believe that our business program builds upon this broadening of the mind, the ability to uh, integrate different disciplines and different ways of thinking, 
Uh, we don't want our business majors to be narrow in their thinking. We want them to be more broad, more inclusive. Um, and so what will happen, uh, some of the technical differences in the major will be that our major, um, if you went to a large state school, you might take 20 to 25 classes in business. At, at Ohio Western University, that won't be the case. You'll take fewer than that. Uh, and that's okay because you, as uh, Dr. Volra said, you'll get, you'll get a really strong foundation, but what you also get is the integration across other disciplines. And that, that allows you to be more innovative, more creative, understanding the world more, uh, and actually uh, is a uh, desired skill when you look at management, leadership, and, uh, project, project, and especially going on and further into executive positions. So I hope that, yeah, I hope that make, uh, helps you with that. Um, Matt? Great. Matt, anything you wanna to add to that? Uh, no, I think that's a, a good answer. Uh, maybe I'd just add, you know, as Dr. Brian mentioned, if, if uh, you know, if you're looking at other programs, some of them may have more required business classes than what you'd encounter in Ohio Wesleyan. And uh, we think that can be an advantage to you at Ohio Wesleyan and you know, not having as many requirements and that you, you have more flexibility to take things across campus where, where you develop an interest and where you see a potential path for yourself. So uh, you're, you're not graduating as just somebody who's great at looking at spreadsheets, but you're somebody who understands how these spreadsheets can relate to you know, all, all these other disciplines that, that you've encountered uh, on, on campus. So you, you, have, you have more flexibility to be involved in other areas of study, which can enhance your resume. Uh, and you also have a little bit more flexibility because the, the major isn't quite as packed to engage in some experiences that are really gonna give you a boost, whether that's uh, you know, studying abroad or you know, doing an internship for a semester or, you know, whatever it is, there's a little bit more flexibility there for you to really tailor the experience to be what you, what you want it to be and what's gonna, be, what's gonna serve you well. Very good. Another question that's come in, it's sort of a two-part question. Um, what management classes are included in the business administration major and what types of management careers would the business administration program prepare me for? Either you want to answer that or is there a resource as well that you'd recommend students consult for additional information? Yeah, let me jump on that. Uh, the courses, <clears throat> anytime you want to look at our courses, we, uh, uh, on the uh, Department of uh, Economics and Business, on our webpage, there's a, uh, there is a tab that, that shows it's, a, it's an advising checklist, but it has a really nice layout of the courses. But basically, in a business administration major, what you, what you do is we, we want you to take that exploring management course, business class to get started. And then, and then what, we, what you're going to do is you're going you're gonna to take courses in all of the functional areas of business. So you're going to take an accounting class. You're going to take a uh, finance class. You're going to take a marketing class. Um, you're going to take a law class. And... Uh, uh, oh, and then you're also going to take a statistics class because that's critical. We want you to have st statistical skills, uh, particularly as we look forward into the future with the idea of uh, data management. Um, um, and, uh, and so you're going to, that's the core. And then what you do is then you're going to branch out of that. And as Dr. Volrov said, you're going to take a choice. Uh, you will explore the area of marketing, uh, which would take you down areas of uh, advertising, public relations, uh, digital marketing, uh, market research, and then branding. And then the management side of it is a little more flexible even. And uh, that will, what you'll take there would be international business, entrepreneurship, uh, managerial accounting. Uh, it's a little bit more broad-based, but it's more focused on the uh, managerial side. Great, thank you. Can you talk about the EMF Accounting Fellows and Latham Fellows programs? How are students considered for these opportunities and um, what, what uh, opportunities do they have within the programs as well? Well, Dr. Vores managing, actually he's directing the EMF program, so I'll let him talk about that. Okay, yeah, thanks. So 
uh, the Economic Management Fellows Program. It's a great opportunity for uh, students who are interested in, in economics, interested in, in business. Uh, it's a one-year program. So uh, one semester you'll have a, a seminar style course. We're, we're wrapping that up right now, the spring semester where uh, every, every class session you'll, uh, well, you'll, you'll rotate, okay? So your, your professors will be uh, different every week and you're going to have interaction with every single professor in our department and you're gonna be getting a, a broad overview of uh, issues in, in the world of economics and business and getting to encounter some ideas that you might not get to encounter in some other business classes. So the intent there is that you're, you're getting connected with the faculty in the department, you're getting more familiar with all of these different career paths and ideas, uh, and it's a good launching point for you as a, as a new student who's trying to figure out what your, what your place is. Uh, in addition to that, you get, a, get to be involved in a trip to New York City, which is an incredible networking opportunity where uh, for, I can't remember, three or four days, we're, we're visiting with uh, alums that are you know, running companies, starting companies that are in leadership roles, uh, just an amazing learning and networking experience. So to, uh, to participate in, a pro in this program, you, of course, you need to be admitted to Ohio Wesleyan. Uh, you need to be a good student. And honestly, that definition changes a little bit year to year because we're, when we're evaluating candidates, we're trying to be a little bit more holistic and not look only at a, at a test score or a GPA, but understand you know, what have you been involved in? What are you interested in? Are you really a, a good fit for this program? So we're looking for students who are, who are motivated and who are, who are clearly capable. Uh, and you'll do an interview where we're, we're trying to gauge that a little bit more and, and understand uh, how this, this program might fit in with your academic and, and career interests. Um, and then accounting fellows and, and Latham Entrepreneurial Scholars, a similar type, type story, accounting fellows, whereas the EM Economic Management Fellows is directed at freshman students, accounting fellows that's directed at, at sophomore level students. And uh, that experience will involve uh, an internship, there'll, there'll be some travel, the, uh, the destination changes year to year. Uh, you'll have a minor in accounting. Uh, Lathan on Entrepreneurial Scholars, I'll let you talk about that, Dr. Brian, because you're, you're running that. <laughs> yeah, let me jump in. So what's interesting about the, um, really all three of these programs are, uh, they both, they all three have different purposes, but they all share sort of a commonality. And that is, uh, one of the things we want to do, particularly near the end of those programs, is we want to connect our students with our alumni. And uh, so the EMF take a trip to New York, all of those site visits are with uh, OMU alumni. Uh, CEOs, uh, bank presidents, uh, you name it. Uh, and then uh, same with the accounting. Uh, the entrepreneurial program is, is uh, fairly new still. And, uh, but, but by the time you come on board, uh, we'll have that trip planned out. That trip is a, we're, uh, we're, we're planning right now to try to take our students to Silicon Valley and introduce them to uh, our entrepreneurs out there. Um, um, so for example, we have, a, we have a recent grad who's out there working in a uh, uh, startup that's predicted to be a, a billion dollar uh, industry, uh, company when they're done with it uh, within a couple of years. So all of these are connected. So the, the accounting though, and uh, the accounting and the, the entrepreneurial scholars programs are software based programs and they're designed again to expand you out of the classroom. It's not enough to just have book knowledge. Uh, we can get that pretty much anywhere. What we want to be able to do is take that knowledge and give it, uh, give it some legs, right? Give it something of substance. We want you to take the material and connect it into an area that you're really interested in. And, and these programs help you do that. The other thing about the Entrepreneurial Scholars Program is that it's an interdisciplinary program. And uh, so we believe entrepreneurship uh, uh, is not just business. We think it bridges across the campus. And so that's a great opportunity to connect with uh, other students across the campus and look at applying business skills into other, uh, other disciplines. Uh, by the way, Stephanie, you, one of the questions you asked is uh, where do our students go and where are they employed? Um, I did pull down a list. These are just recent grads. So these would be kind of entry level jobs. Uh, just a couple of them, digital project manager. One, one holds the title of brand strategist. Uh, there's a couple sales jobs in there, uh, staff accountants, 
uh, production assistants, uh, uh, media analysts, uh, strategy associate, there's one here, life underwriting case administrator, um, web content analyst, analysts, uh, event management, we've had students go into that, um, and, and account management. So there's, that's just, a, just some recent grads uh, that we've had come out. A specific question came in about international business and graduate, where that could perhaps take a student. Any examples that the two of you can cite related to graduates who've, who've uh, come out of that major and, and, and what they've pursued specifically? Yeah, I can, I can talk a little bit about that. I teach the international business class and, uh, you know, so our students are interested in international. Um, you know, and, and this is what I tell my students uh, is when you graduate from university, it's not like somebody's going to go, hey, I want you to be an international business expert for me. You have to work your way up to that, quite honestly. So the international business major prepares you for that. Uh, you still have to then go out and, and develop a, a skill set, and then uh, and then you can move more easily into that. Um, I think the uh, international business major tends to be uh, it's useful for students that are targeting that. Uh, although we've had a lot of students go through that program and wind up in domestic business, right, business in the United States. But the reality is. Even if you're doing business just in Ohio or New York or California, you're, you're engaged in international business because your competition is international. And so there's a broad application of that major. Um, the other thing about that major, by the way, which is interesting, it's a very different approach. Uh, it's just not a bunch of courses about international business. It actually involves a, a semester abroad uh, in a very specific area that's tied to the language, which is also tied to uh, other coursework that you would take to sort of broaden your um, history knowledge, your literature knowledge, you know, uh, different uh, uh, aspects of that area. And so it's, it's really a, a fascinating major because it, it's more than just business, it's, it's cultural almost in its approach. And one of the biggest things that you deal with when you deal with international business is the cultural aspects of, uh, of crossing the border and then doing business. Thank you for that. A uh, student also asked if there are students who are double majoring in business and the arts. Yes. Matt, you wanna take that or you want me to talk about that? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit and then you can, you can jump in too. Uh, there, there is quite a bit of overlap between students who are interested in, in the arts and in business. Um, certainly some are, are double majors, probably more commonly we have people who are minoring in business, uh, but a lot of our art students do see a, a benefit to them of being involved in, in, in a business major, whether they're planning to eventually run their own business, you know, maybe, maybe they're going to run their own studio or uh, whatever it is, you know, those business skills are something that they're going to need in, in their context. Um, and I, I see that a lot. I have several advisees who are, uh, well, yeah, several advisees who are kind of, they have a foot in, in both of those worlds. Yeah, we've had, I've had in 10 years, I've had uh, double majors in music and business, uh, theater and business. Uh, we've had that. Uh, certainly we've had art students as well. Um, uh, we've had religion students with business. Um, and one of, the, one of the things that's really interesting about Ohio Westland is the way the coursework is structured and the programs are designed, it allows you to double major. And again, and again, this is part of that whole liberal arts perspective. We want you to be broadly educated. Um, and so it's, it's very easy to uh, major and then minor in at least one other area. Uh, if you're a good student, and most of you I'm sure are on the call, um, it's real feasible to do a double major. Um, and so, yeah, you could, you could plan on that. And in fact, I would like to see more of that. Um, I think business is a great major that complements uh, all these other disciplines. And so if you're thinking about doing that, I would encourage you uh, to seriously uh, pursue that. A student is asking for clarification on whether or not real estate business is a major provided at Ohio Wesleyan. I know it is not, but can either of you talk about how a student with an interest in that area 
might pursue uh, business at OWU? Well, I'll, I'll jump in because, because this has always been amazing to me. We do not teach real estate at Ohio Westland, but what's really fascinating to me is how many of our uh, graduates are in the real estate business and not just, you know, not, not just doing uh, residential real estate. Uh, we have a number of students who are engaged in commercial real estate, commercial real estate financing. Um, um, we've had a couple students recently that are dealing with uh, basically fund management that, that invests into real estates. Uh, so the combination, uh, we have great connection, we have great alumni connections into that industry. Uh, and I think this combination of finance, uh, economics and business that we, that we promote uh, tends to work really well in, the, in that type of field. Great, thank you. What are the benefits of the Waltamati Center? And can you talk a little bit about the resources that are available through the center? So I think one of the biggest benefits of the, well, there's, there's multiple benefits of the Waltamati Center. One of the biggest benefits is it allows us as, as faculty teaching in economics and business to be really nimble. So when we see a need, when there's something that we need to learn about, that we need to start offering to students, we're able to do that. When there's a, a new program that we'd like to create, whether that's the economic management fellows or accounting fellows or Latham scholars, uh, we, we have resources to make that kind of thing happen. Uh, Walter Monte Center also means that we are very well equipped as a department to support students as, as you look for internships, as you look for jobs. We, we have somebody, uh, Carolyn Lambert, who works full-time in our department, and her job is just to serve students in our department as they're looking for internships, as they're looking for jobs, and she is incredible at that. She has a, a really uh, broad network, and students come in and talk with her and uh, you know, tell her what it is that they're, they're trying to achieve, and she's able to, to help make that happen. Glenn, anything else? Yeah, the only thing I would add to that uh, is that there are several scholarship programs. The, the, more, the one that's really popular is the Corns Scholarship Program, named after Evan Corns, one of our uh, distinguished alumni who uh, went to Cleveland and built a, uh, a very prosperous business. Anyway, the Corns Scholar is, a, is another opportunity for scholarship money, uh, and it's tied to the study of business entrepreneurship. Um, and, you know, there's other similar opportunities to that there uh, that, that are uh, endowed and, uh, and funded through the Volta Body Center. Very good. So Glenn, to close the loop on the question about real estate, students okay. asking what, what major or program of study would one hope to pursue at Ohio Wesleyan to achieve future success in that field? Yeah, probably a great question. Uh, uh, you know, and, and one of the answers to that, well, it depends. It depends on what area of uh, real estate we're talking about. Um, but uh, I would say there's several majors that, fi that fit that, right? Um, the finance economics major would tie into that really well. Uh, the economics major would fit in there as well. And, uh, it, and I would also say the business administration um, probably the management route, I would say, and then taking that flexibility that's in the concentration and taking courses that are more tailored to the uh, um, being an analyst, because, you know, real estate is about analyzing, understanding where markets are at, where, where value is at. Uh, I think you could do that as well. Great. There have been several questions that have come in related to internships study off campus, study abroad opportunities. Can you talk first generally about the types of experiences students have in those areas? Gosh, experiences are just all over the board. You know, we, we have, I'm thinking about my advisees and students in my classes right now. I have a student who has, will have an internship in Washington DC working with a government agency this summer. I have somebody who has an internship, uh, who had an internship offer with, with Puma. Uh, helping them with, with some of their marketing activities, uh, students who go back to their hometowns and, and have internships there, uh, just all, all over the board. And I, um, you know, we, we work really hard to be flexible with internships. One, one opportunity you have as a business major is to take an internship and use that uh, 
to earn credit. And uh, we, we want that internship experience to be something that really ties in with what you're interested in, uh, but we also want it to, to tie in with what we're teaching. And uh, almost always we're able to, to find some, some overlap there. If there's something that a student really wants to pursue with a, a summertime internship or whenever it might be, uh, we, we, can, we, can, we can find those connections with, uh, you know, with, with the curriculum. And, and I also add that, as I mentioned before, Carolyn Lamer, she, she works really hard in our department to help connect students with opportunities. And that's not something you should take for granted. Most, most, schools, uh, most schools will have a career services, but that's a career services that's serving the entire campus, which is great. That's a really important resource. You have that at Ohio Wesleyan, but as, as an added benefit to being a major in our department, you have somebody who is specifically serving you and specifically building a network that is relevant to you. Uh, that's hugely important when it comes to finding internships that are going to help to get you where you want to go. Uh, in addition to all these other programs that we've been talking about, the, all these fellows programs and, and travel opportunities, which, as Dr. Brian said, we, we build those with the intention of helping you network. And the purpose of that is to help you find internships, help you find jobs. Uh, so all in all, I'd say we work very hard as a department to uh, make finding an internship as easy as possible for you. And I, I mean, it's not, you, you still have to work. You still have to work to make it happen, but we are there supporting you and we're there helping you understand how it fits in with where you're going and what you're studying. Let me jump in here, Dr. Villarreal. So here's a, I'm just looking at an email um, real quick. This is, I, I knew this question would come up and so I kept this email up. This is a, a recent email from our internship coordinator, uh, Carolyn Lambert. So here's some featured opportunities. Now these are not, not guaranteed, you would have to compete for these, but still she's pushing these at our students uh, pretty much on a weekly basis. So Diamond Hill International Investment Intern, uh, here's one. It's a marketing, a digital media internship for the uh, local park service. Uh, uh, this would be interesting. I actually tied in uh, Stephanie to our earlier uh, question. Berkshire Hathaway Realty, uh, media marketing, uh, micro internship, Hawthorne Gardening. I'm not certain what that is, but we have to look closer. Nice source, uh, data government analysts. Uh, we have uh, ongoing programs uh, with a program called Human Connections, which is uh, down, uh, students go down to Mexico, they spend, I think it's six weeks, don't quote me about that. And it's a, it's a uh, you actually uh, immerse yourself in the culture and it's about business and entrepreneurship in, uh, in that country. Uh, Prime America is uh, wanting to expand aggressively in Ohio. And so there's uh, kind of, um, internships there. There's one here, Centric Financial Group, and it goes on and on. So you could delete that email, or you could actually pay attention to these emails that are being pushed at you. And so obviously the encouragement is you'd want to pay attention to these. So opportunity, as Dr. Ora says, opportunity is not, not an issue here. Um, the issue is going to be your own initiative. Uh, and uh, if you have initiative, uh, you will succeed. There's no question in my mind about that. One of the other one of the, the other side of your uh, question there was about study abroad. Uh, we um, highly encourage our students to study abroad. Uh, it will uh, it matures you, it expands you, it gives you a cultural experience, um, and uh, it immer it immerses you in a different, completely different type of environment. Um, <clears throat> the university we have a uh, global studies uh, uh, program. We have a we have a, a, a director who's uh, very focused on your um, travel abroad studies. So it's very, it can be very seamless for you if you go through the system. Um, and we've had students go to Spain, uh, England, uh, pretty much everywhere in Europe, uh, South America, uh, Mexico. So we, uh, those opportunities are definitely there. Um, if you want to study abroad, um, you should be planning ahead for that. Um, let's not do that at the last minute. It can be done, but it's really hard. But if you plan ahead for that, it's uh, with your advisor, it's uh, fairly easy to put that into your schedule uh, and keep you right on track for a four-year graduation. Uh, Glenn or Matt, are there any specific travel learning courses within the business area that you have been offered in the last couple of years? Yeah, let me think about that. I, um, um, 
I think the answer is no. Uh, if I'm, unless Dr. Walrath corrects me on that. Um, the uh, travel opportunities that we have in the program are predominantly through right now through the uh, scholars programs. Mm -hmm. So a business student could certainly take a travel learning course in another area. And oh, yeah, absolutely. We've, we've very much encouraged that. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Right. And I, I guess one thing I would add is uh, oftentimes these travel learning experiences emerge from a collaboration between a student and faculty. So a student will say, hey, I'm really interested in this. And the faculty member will say, yeah, that's, that's an interesting idea. What can we do to explore that a little more? Mm -hmm. An example would be, a couple of years ago, uh, Professor Breidenbaugh, he teaches accounting. Uh, he, he had some, some accounting students who were really interested in how accounting works internationally. So they worked together and they planned a summer trip to Australia. It was a, about a, what, I don't know, maybe a month long thing, I think. And they, they visited with all sorts of different firms and government agencies there and they learned all about the international side of accounting. Uh, so this kind of thing happens a lot at Ohio Wesleyan. Uh, even if it's not on the international scale, we have all sorts of little grant programs where if you have something you're interested in or a, an experience you want to pursue, you, you can talk with a faculty member and come up with some ideas about, hey, how, how can we make this real? How, how can we make this happen? And you know, maybe that means that you're taking a trip to Seattle to learn more about uh, big tech or Silicon Valley or, or whatever it is. Uh, but again, as Dr. Bryan was saying, op the opportunity is not lacking at Ohio Wesleyan. There are, there are so many things. Uh, it is easy to be overwhelmed by all the directions that you can go in. Uh, you, you, you are only going to be hindered by the initiative that, that you choose to, to invest. Uh, so if, if there's a, a travel learning experience that you're craving that's related to business, I'd say talk with business faculty, and that's probably something that we can we can make happen in some shape or form. That's great. Just to go back for a second to internships, uh, Dr. Brian, when you read that email, you cited several examples of marketing internships that students are encouraged to pursue. Are there any others that either of you can um, recall uh, students asking specifically about internship opportunities focused on marketing? Any others that jump out to you as, as good examples? You want to stay with the field of marketing or? Marketing or, specifically, uh, yes. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you, you catch me off guard on that. Uh, yeah. I know that uh, I'm doing an independent study right now with a student. I know that last summer did a uh, um, internship with uh, in the supply chain field, mm -hmm. um, which is connected to the marketing field. Uh, it's, uh, it's connected. Um, not, it's not one of the primaries, but it's certainly connected. Um, he, uh, he worked with a company that was integrated into the Amazon distribution center. Uh, fascinating experience. In fact, he's, uh, he's convinced that uh, supply chain is an area that he wants to spend his career in. Um, think about that and some other things. I know we've had students uh, uh, from a marketing perspective do wind up doing strategy. Um, we had a, uh, uh, one of our recent successes, if you want to look at his success, is uh, uh, we had a student graduated a uh, year, year two, year, man, it was just a year ago, year, and uh, she is now in Seattle, uh, and she's working for a, a, strategy, a marketing strategy firm. She interned there, and it turned into a full-time job. Uh, and they handle the accounts for REI and uh, Starbucks. Um, now, she had initiative, she, she pursued it, and uh, we supported uh, from a university perspective. Uh, this ties in, by the way, this ties into what uh, Dr. Volrath was saying. Uh, what she was able to do is use grant money for a very specific research project in the Seattle area. And what she did is she tied that to the ability to um, visit the Seattle area and interview. And then she used that time as well to interview uh, our alums in Seattle. And uh, because of that, she wound up with the internship and that snowballed into really a very, uh, a very desirable position that she's in right now. Very good. 
Here's a pretty specific question. Um, is it possible to double major in business and pre-law studies? If so, is there a particular area of business that works best in this particular combination? Uh, yes, that, that is possible. As Dr. Brian was saying before, you know, if, if you're willing to, to put in the work, there, there is room to, to double major in many things here on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, related to this, one of our students who's, who's graduating this May, she was a business administration marketing student um, and she was also, to be honest with you, I can't remember what her double major was, but she is, she's going to law school uh, this fall at Ohio State. She got a, a full ride there uh, in part with, because of the combination of her interests. Okay, she, she's an, a stellar business student, but she, she combined that with, with uh, some social justice interests and communication things that, that she was very passionate about and uh, developed a really, really strong resume there. So I can add, actually add to that a little bit more too from, um, so uh, what's interesting is my, law, my daughter is in the law field. She's, a, she's an attorney. And uh, this is a, an example of how you can combine majors uh, and pursue a passion and, and yet have a liberal arts background that allows you to sort of pivot and take advantage of opportunities as, as they come available. Um, so this is prior to my coming to Ohio Wesleyan. She graduated from another liberal arts institution and, and she double majored in fine art and international business. So really strange combination, uh, but it was really appealing. Um, she, uh, when she uh, it took, she was out about two years uh, doing another profession and then she decided to apply to law school. And I think it was that combination that was really of interest to uh, Ohio State University, and they brought her in. And now she's uh, now she's a, a, a nice law firm, and she's working in the area of environmental law. So this is the kind of the interesting thing, right? You never know where your career will go, and so this idea of a broad-based education is really important for you. Uh, but I think the key with legal studies is I think most a number of law for, uh, uh, law schools, they're looking for uh, something that's unique about you. And so, yeah, a double major in, a, in business and, and another field makes perfect sense. It certainly opens up the area of contract law, business law, uh, you know, areas like that, if, uh, if you want to be more specific. Great. We just received a question that aligns perfectly with a previously submitted question about an MBA. Um, what does Ohio Wesleyan's business program do to connect students with graduate programs? Do students go directly into MBA programs? And, and what are some of the places where they typically enroll? Great question. Let me just jump in with that. So, um, most, um, one of the things we want to encourage our students to do is go to um, top, top MBA programs if that's what they want to pursue. Um, top MBA programs are uh, looking for you to be a good student, but they're also looking for you to bring work experience with you. And so the recommendation is two to five years of good solid work experience. Uh, and then and then move into an MBA program. Th that's that classic path of going to a top school and then using that to leverage into a uh, top career. Um, there's there's reasons for that. Uh, graduate school isn't just uh, the MBA program isn't just about learning a bunch of facts and figures. It's it's really applying, and so they want you to have that experience. Uh, we've had students uh, uh, go to Harvard. We've had students go, uh, a number of our students have gone to OSU, Ohio State. Uh, we've had several go overseas. Uh, London School of Economics, we've had several students go there. Um, and then a couple, uh, well, Northwestern here uh, uh, in, in the States, we've had students go there, University of San Francisco, and then uh, a couple more um, uh, different schools in, the, uh, in England. So, um, what can we do to help you get there? Uh, one is prepare you with a good solid background. Um, your, your goal would be to graduate with a good GPA. 
because your MBA program, like it or not, they will look at your GPA. So you do want to have a nice GPA. Uh, and then um, what you want to do is you want to get to know your faculty. All these programs that we've been talking about allow you to do that. And then as faculty, we're instrumental in helping you in the application process through uh, writing letters of reference. And the more I know my student, uh, the, the better I can write a letter of reference for them uh, in terms of their abilities and what they can and, and what they would bring to an MBA program. I'd add just a couple of things. Uh, so something that I think that you get by coming to a, a liberal arts school instead of just a, a plain business school is that uh, we place a lot of emphasis on developing your ability to communicate, which other schools do this too, but uh, we built bu build into our curriculum is an expectation that you are going to become an excellent writer is an expectation that you are going to become an excellent presenter. And these are things that, that we emphasize in our business classes. And these are the type of things that are going to set you apart in that, <clears throat> excuse me, in that application process. We talk with our students about, you, you know, you, you might, you might have really incredible things to say, and you might be really smart, but if the way that you're representing yourself, uh, on paper or in that presentation is, is not professional, people are gonna tune you out and ignore you right away. So uh, we, we work hard to uh, equip you to, to represent yourself well. Um, and, and another thing that I would add to this idea about getting into, MBA, getting into an MBA program or even just finding that, that first, uh, you know, landing that first position is, uh, you know, not just an internship, not just a travel learning experience or you know, getting to listen to great speakers on campus, but we, you, you have opportunities here to be involved in in practical and real uh, projects. Okay, so some of that's happening in class, but as I mentioned at the start of this uh, of this this call, I'm the advisor for a couple of clubs on campus that exist for that reason. So I'm an advisor for marketing group, and this semester, for example, we we had two projects. The students were working with. Uh, a fitness studio that's launching here in Delaware. They were helping that fitness studio to develop their, their brand identity and to come up with a marketing plan. And they were also working with a, a law firm here in town, helping them to come up with a marketing plan for reaching younger clients that they haven't been able to connect with. Okay, so two really simple examples there, but that's happening every semester where students have an opportunity to work on something that is real, that real businesses are going to use. And, uh, even if you have a small role in that, that's something that you learn a lot from and you can talk about when you're applying to a graduate program or you're applying for a job. Uh, it, it gives you a perspective that other students don't have and it's a, it's a big advantage. Dr. Volrock, you mentioned the marketing club. I'm glad you did. I wanted to ask you to say a little bit more about that, which, which you have done, but you also mentioned the entrepreneurial club. Could you talk a little bit about the, the activities that students engage in through that club? Sure. So we have another club on campus, uh, DECA, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with from high school, and hopefully some of you have been participating in that. So we have a, a college chapter of DECA, and this exists because we had some, some students who are very entrepreneurial minded and very excited about uh, what, what DECA could, uh, could offer them as far as uh, you know, engaging with businesses and uh, networking. So what um, it's a relatively new club on campus. We're just in our, our second year and they do two things. So one, uh, DECA goes in and competes at national and international competitions. So last year we sent a group to New York and um, we had, our, our students did very well there. We had one student who, who placed third uh, in, in their category. And uh, at these competitions, you're, you're competing uh, there's a number of ways you can compete, but our students were competing uh, based on cases. So you'd be presented with a situation uh, related to entrepreneurship, related to marketing. You have a set amount of time to come up with how you're going to react. And then you're uh, basically pitching your, your response to a group of business professionals, often high level executives. Uh, and they're, they're giving you feedback about that. So you're learning, you're, you're getting great feedback. You're also expanding, expanding your network. Um, this semester, our DECA club was focused on uh, coming up with a, a business idea of their own, and they uh, started developing three different business plans. And before everything kind of went haywire with uh, with coronavirus, 
they uh, they had on the calendar to uh, do a, a pitch session to a group here in in the Delaware community community called Delaware Does. Delaware Does is a a group of professionals that meets regularly. Uh, they're you know all, all sorts of entrepreneurs and businesses are represented represented from uh, the city and the county and and beyond. Uh, and you know, there are, are serious people in that group who are willing to fund great ideas. So our students had a chance, uh, first of all, they were gonna have, a, this didn't happen because of COVID again, but they were going to have a chance to present their ideas to this group and at the very least get some great feedback of what, what they need to do to improve and to become more professional and be more prepared. Uh, and you know, maybe if they did a great job, they, they could conceivably have received some, some real funding to run with their idea. Uh, so, so that club uh, and the marketing group, you know, I'm, I'm there to uh, just to, you know, facilitate uh, connections, help keep them on track, you know, help them when they're stuck. But these groups are, are really student led and they go in the direction that the students are, are passionate about and are, are most interested in. You mentioned that some students might have participated or are participating in DECA in their high schools. Some students in their high schools may have had more exposure to economics versus business, depending on what their offerings are, and, and some it might have been the reverse. What advice might either of you have for a student who comes out of high school thinking that, that they might have an interest in economics or business? How do they determine which might be the better pathway for them? That's a pretty normal, that's a pretty normal uh, position for a number of students. Um, and so th really the first year curriculum that we try to put our students in actually uh, should help them answer that question. So we want to get them into some, uh, uh, you know, one or two of our early business classes, but we also want to have them take uh, Econ 110, which is our principles of Econ class. And so, um, you know, but just by sampling these classes, um, that should help, that does help students actually. It helps them decide uh, what they like and what they want to pursue. And the really nice thing about that from, from the business administration side is uh, those courses that I mentioned, they're all part of the program. And so if you've decided to go to, uh, to the business track, you haven't lost any of your coursework. Uh, you can still use it on the econ side, uh, but it's a slightly different, but, but, but that's how you would do that. The other thing is that you'd, you'd want to spend some time talking to faculty. Um, I know that might be strange to a, a high school student, but your faculty at Ohio Wesleyan want to get to know you. Um, and uh, by talking to faculty, learning about the, the different disciplines uh, in their fields, I think that also helps you make a good decision about what you want to pursue. Great, thank you. The last question that I have for you, as we get ready to wrap up, any last words of wisdom or pieces of advice you'd share for the student who's listening in, who's trying to make that final decision, whether or not to choose a Wu, whether this is the right place of that for them to study business, any last thoughts you might have to share? Uh, in Dr. Bryan's last comments, he was, you know, he, he mentioned that faculty here really want to get to know you. And I think that's true. And I, I think it is a special campus in that sense. Faculty are invested in your success and we're small enough to, to know who you are, to know what you're interested in and to help, help you make the connections that are going to, uh, going, going to help you get a better idea of what you want to be doing with your life and, and how you can, uh, how you, how you can achieve that path. So I would go back to where we pretty much started this conversation, and that is that issue of what is the liberal arts education? What does that add to the business education? And so again, when we look at the business of the future, <clears throat> I, I made a little list. Some of the, these are the things that uh, the experts talk about. <clears throat> things like uh, the skills are novel and adaptive thinking, cross-cultural cross competencies, computational thinking, design mindset, and uh, virtual collaboration, which I think is interesting given what we're doing right now. And so these are skills that um, we believe come from best, are best achieved through
through a liberal arts grounded business administration major. Uh, we don't want to prepare you just for your first job. We want to prepare you for a way of thinking that carries you through your entire career. Very good. Thank you so much to both of you for taking time to participate in this important discussion tonight. I know our participants got a lot from it. And I would again encourage those of you who are participating, if you have further questions for Dr. Volrath or Dr. Bryan, don't hesitate to email them directly. And I know they'll be glad to, to answer those questions for you. If you have questions that weren't answered tonight, or general questions that didn't fit into this topic, there are several additional sessions that we are offering through the Bishop Plus Network. One of those sessions is tomorrow. Um, if you are a student who's in the position to have to make a decision without visiting the campus, there are other students already at Ohio Wesleyan who had to make that very decision, um, and not because of COVID-19, but other, other factors for them. They would be glad to share with you how they reached a decision um, what factors or variables they considered and what helped them in that process. We have additional sessions coming up next week. Uh, becoming a Bishop, if you have paid your deposit or you're close to making that decision and wanna know all the nuts and bolts about your next steps, we have several individuals from the campus community who will be uh, online with us for that. We also have sending your student to OWU which is geared for parents, but open to students as well. And all kinds of topics are covered from academic advising to uh, being an athlete at Ohio Wesleyan to what are residence halls like, uh, to how do I choose a major and many others. Um, so I hope you will tune in again next week. Again, thanks to our panelists, thanks to our participants and everyone have a good night.